All right, looks like Molly's gonna come join us for this one, huh? What do you think, Molly? What do you think? Nathan Cox, thanks for joining us around the home. Okay, so my wife went to Home Goods yesterday. Yeah, scary, I know, right? That means I've got something to do today. And this shouldn't be too bad of a project. Just gotta hang a curtain around, okay? I know I haven't done one of these videos yet, so it's a good time to start. Some of the things we're probably gonna need. Now the impact's not necessary, but it's nice because uh, this should be holding a Phillips screws in here. So I already got the Phillips bit there. Now a drill, you can use a drill for both parts, for the drilling and for the screws. Okay, and then of course, a set of drill bits. And then we're also just gonna grab ourselves a pencil. It doesn't have to be a carpenter's pencil. Actually, it's easier if it's a regular pencil for this job and a tape measure. And it never hurts to have a vacuum close by too to help cut the dust as we're drilling little holes and stuff like that. This is my little Samsung cordless. I'll have a video top right which kind of goes all through this if you guys want to check that out separately. All right, now this should be pretty common for most of these curtain rods. There should be two parts so that they can be adjustable. You know, they can slide in and out with each other. And they should give you a little package of hardware to go with it. All right, so we got a little black bag here. It's got some screws and some mollies, okay? And then we have very standard curtain brackets. It's also pretty standard to have three of these. So we have one for each end and then one to support the middle. Many curtain rods will be just two pieces, but some have a third slider, okay? So there's kind of a minimum, definitely a minimum amount that these can extend. But this makes a fairly strong curtain rod having that third piece in the middle. Okay, now the next big question is, is where exactly do we hang these things? Now someone said, well, I'll just Google where you hang curtain rods. Okay, people uh, say this in the nicest way, we gotta stop Googling everything, okay? Uh, Google just picks up the most popular answer, especially now when it comes to technical questions on like the next video game or, or the next uh, PlayStation 5, you can get some very good solid answers right away. But when you start Googling things like how high do I hang things or how do I build this or do that, the answers are, are generally really crappy a lot of times. Um, just because it's a more popular answer from the search result doesn't mean it's correct. It definitely doesn't mean it's correct for you, okay? Okay, now hopefully you got something to stand on that's better than a chair. I've got a, my painter's bench here. Now, as a guy, <laughs> the first drapes that I hung or curtain rod for the drapes, uh, I would have to click right here, like directly above the window as tight as I could. I don't know if that's a guy thing. And my wife's like, what are you doing? Why'd you hang the drapes like that? I'm like, have you told me just to do it? And you, you know, and so she assumed that I was thinking the same thing that she was thinking. She wants them only about, about four or five inches from the ceiling, you know, so that we got nine inches above the windows, which is good. So I'll go with that right there. I'll go through the four and a half. I think that looks pretty solid. So we'll do four and a half inches down from the ceiling to the top of the bracket. And then on the sides, of course, <laughs> I also originally, not, not these ones, but I'm talking like, you know, years before, would stick it directly right next to the window. It seemed right to me, but we're gonna push them actually 11 inches past the window. Now, center of the window is pretty easy to find. It's just right there between the blinds. All right. And four and a half inches down, we're right there. Okay, now we're just gonna mark where the two holes are for the bracket. That's all we're doing right now. Okay, now this time we're going out 11 inches. I kind of put a little mark right there. Jeez, I dropped everything. And four and a half inches down from the ceiling. Marking our two holes again. And then we're just gonna do that on the other side. Okay, now the next part is to work with the fastener. So we have these little plastic wall inserts, okay? Some people call these mollies. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make right off the bat is, well, let's find the, the drill that's required to fit with this, which most of the time it's a quarter inch for most of these kits, and just drill a quarter inch hole and just try to shove this through. Because you may be drilling right into a stud, okay? So first, let's check the wall where we just marked all our spots and see if there's a stud behind it. Now I like to start with a smaller drill bit. We're definitely not starting with that quarter inch we need for the molly. Um, and this one here, you can go smaller, but it's a 764th, uh, which is the right size for this number eight screw 
to do the pre-drill, okay? Um, so if I hit wall stud, then I'm gonna pre-drill it anyways and I'm already got the right drill bit. Okay, and if you wanna avoid a mess, you know, this is where you put your vacuum right up while you're, while you're drilling. Okay, now I know someone's gonna ask, how do you know if you hit a stud? Well, the she rock's only a half inch thick, so once you drill a little ways through, you're either gonna go all the way through like there's nothing there, or you're gonna hit something solid. And that's how you know I've got a stud right here. So obviously, not using the molly there. So we're gonna pre-drill this one and, and the hole above it, and then move on to the next bracket. Okay, now this is what it looks like when there's nothing behind her, see? That the drill can go all the way in. There's no stud there. So we're gonna have to come back and drill for the, um, for the plastic molly. So I'm not gonna worry about pre-drilling this one here. I'm just gonna go to the bigger bit. But now I still gotta try the one on the right. Okay, so the center bracket does not need molly. So we're just gonna drill those screws directly in through to the studs. But the two side ones do. So we need the inserts on those. I got a little instruction pamphlet, which is really pathetic. Looking for at least just a well, actually, here we go. It's asking for a 3 16th inch bit. Now, 3 16th is just a hair smaller than a quarter. Um, but you see, and that actually looks like it is a little small for it, uh, but this needs to go into the wall fairly tight, but not so tight that you're breaking the wall or breaking the molly to get it in. But if it goes in loose, it's not gonna expand correctly. It's just gonna be sloppy. Um, so let's try this bit and see what we got. Okay, now let's see if we can get it in the hole. Okay, I don't think so. Let's try the quarter. Okay, now before we go too far, we're gonna go ahead and test that. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. Nope, good and stiff, but it actually can go in. The quarter inch is the better choice. So let's go make all these quarter inch. Okay, now I've got my two pre-drilled holes for the center bracket, and then the four Molly set screws. I already have the plastic inserts in for the two outer brackets, okay? So now all I gotta do is screw the brackets in place. Now, I'll be honest, this is a kind of a standard bit holder. Um, it's like two inches long. And so like the bottom one's gonna be easy to hit, but the top one's gonna be kind of angled and make it kind of hard. I normally have like a, a six inch Phillips bit, but it's not here at the house right now. It's at another place where I'm working. So um, I'm doing the best I can, but just try not to strip the head completely out when you're doing the top one. All right, now comes the, uh, the nice part here. Everybody wants to see it kind of completed. So I've already loosened up the little set screws in those brackets to hold you know, this rod tight in there. But now we basically just have to set it up there and we're done. Well, might as well chill out after a job well done. Just hanging out here on the couch with Benny. Well, there we go. Please take a moment to share this video. I really hope this helps you to see how easy it is. You can hang your own curtain rod, get it up and get it up nice and right. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, check out our website, and there's another video for you to see as well. Thanks again.